A lot of people who come to my channel come here because of my videos on autism, mental health, and my analysis of other complicated subjects. Naturally, because of this thematic focus, I am met with several commenters who have, or are currently, contemplating suicide. Often these comments take one of two forms. In some cases, I receive the most heartfelt gratitude because I have somehow put into words what others have suffered internally for many years, and that validation carries with it therapeutic value and hope. In other cases, unfortunately, they offer detailed explanations of the suffering they continue to endure. In both ways, the vivid stories of their personal traumas and tragedies leave me breathless. I just don't know how to respond. The fact that somebody would take the time to share their vulnerabilities with me to describe the darkest places they've been to is humbling to the point where it feels like my heart has been permanently steamrolled. Ergo, I've refrained from trying to address the issue of suicide as I do not feel I have the qualifications to do so. After all, I'm just a 25-year-old guy who does YouTube videos as a hobby on stuff that interests him. I'm no psychologist. Yet today, I wish to briefly break my silence on the subject of suicide. Allow me to explain. On December 3rd, which is yesterday at the time of this recording, I finished my very last class at university. And naturally, I was elated, especially <laughs> because my class finished early. I treated myself to a donut and a tea, my ideal, albeit simple form of celebration, and as I rode the train back home, I was contemplating you know, all the various surprises that I have in store for my viewers, all of which will be announced in the next couple of weeks. Then, as I was nearing my destination, the train began to slow to a halt. And for several minutes, I, among a couple of other confused passengers, sat blank-faced, waiting for the conductor to announce the purpose of our prolonged inertia. I thought it might be one of the several problems I've usually experienced riding the train. You know, the train ahead of us is yet to leave, a trouble with the track switch, a physical altercation with the passenger, all of which I've experienced. Then finally, the conductor spoke in a tone of voice that was somehow typically monotone and straightforward, but also emotionally considerate. I was waiting for the key words in his sentence, but... I did not expect to hear him utter the word fatality, and suddenly I froze. My elation was just completely cut out of me. I started thinking about this nine-year-old child that was sitting in front of me, wondering how he felt or if he saw anything. I thought about the possibility for not just other children, but adults on the train. Now, luckily, I didn't see anything because I was absorbed in a podcast, but since the PA announcement, I had enveloped myself in the dense silence of the near-empty coach I was settled in. Then I realized how I might spend the next hour or two, waiting for the EMS to show up and perform their gruesome yet heroic duties. I thought about my own experiences with suicidal ideation, the various forms of medical help and self-help that I have dealt with over the years, and how they left much to be desired. I figured I would take the emotional consideration I felt for my fellow man in this moment and write a brief message to those who currently feel hopeless as I have so many times in the past. I want you all to hear the greatest piece of wisdom I have ever received on the subject of suicide, for it has helped put all my past suffering in a useful context. The wisdom I am about to share are the words of one of my all-time heroes, Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins. He had a really, really rough life. He contemplated suicide several times, yet in a perverse way he was able to take that tragedy and craft some of the most beautiful songs I have ever heard. Songs which, again, put all my life's suffering in context. During an interview in the mid-2000s, he was asked about his thoughts on depression and suicide, and he said these words, which I will never forget. Every time I've been on the precipice of, of you know, jumping off a cliff or doing something crazy or, you know, whatever, um, if I saw what was going to come later, if I if I'd been able to easily see what was going to ahead in my life, there's no way I would even consider it. Life is full of so many sublime, beautiful moments that to be your own judge and jury, I think, is is asking too much of yourself. You're making an assumption that you're out of options. That this is the you know this is the option. I think there's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, I think what's the shame is that you could go in and close a door and sit there and brood and spin and, you know, drill yourself into the ground. I mean, that's the shame. If you don't give other people in your life the opportunity to, to, to lift you up, again, you're making a call that you shouldn't be making.
At the very least, in a general sense, he is right. I know he is right from my own experiences. Here is a very personal detail of my life to strengthen his point. The last time I tried to commit suicide was in 2013. If I had completed that act, then I would have never started this YouTube channel. I would never have been able to be a positive influence in the lives of several people with autism and mental health problems. I would never have worked as an intern for a production company. I would never have done live streams before hundreds, sometimes thousands of people. I would never have had the opportunity to interview prominent celebrities, one interview of which you can find on this channel if you look far back enough. I would have never gone to Austria or Jamaica. I would never have met my ex-girlfriend, who I still love dearly, and vice versa. Not to mention, I would have never played all of the awesome games that have come out in that time, like Red Dead Redemption 2 or uh, movies like Avengers Infinity War. Imagine forbidding yourself of that awesome ending and even more experiences like that in the future. Look, you don't know how much better your life can be. And I understand how hopeless things can feel and how the pain you feel right now can be so unrelenting and cruel that it would be better for it to all end. I know, I know. And I'm under no illusion that even what I've said in this video won't be enough for a few of you. But... Even to those people, please know that there are people out there, whether they're family members or professional strangers, that will go to unimaginable ends to keep you alive, to get you the help you need, to figure out what resources work best for you. And in case you have not done so yet, I encourage you to look at either the description box or the pinned comment on this video. There you will find some resources that I have found work very well, not just for me, but for those I have recommended them to. Until next time, guys, just remember, as I have always said, you deserve to be happy.